Okay, so this is a quick video on everything I bring on a bike packing trip. And I'm gonna go through all these one by one and uh, talk about some of the decisions being made here and what gets in and what doesn't get in and why. Okay, so here we have everything laid out, uh, including over here uh, for the bags I use. So both of the panniers, the handlebar bag, and then that rucksack I use for the back carrier. Uh, I've discovered the rucksack's actually the best thing for the carrier. I did previously have a proper bag that sat there, but it's very hard to get the panniers on and off with that bag on. Uh, that rucksack is also actually designed to carry water if you want, so it's very waterproof, uh, which is also quite valuable. Um, but anyway, so let's look at all of this stuff bit by bit. Not packed, by the way but insisting on not moving is the cat. That's Dodger. He's just not getting out of the way for me. Um, so if we start at the back row, we've got the clothes. Now I've included here the stuff I actually wear. So that does reduce the amount I'd actually be packing. Uh, but we have uh, a couple of uh, tops, underwear and socks, uh, two fleeces, um, that's because it gets cold at night, both in Ireland and obviously also in Scotland. Uh, I have three water bottles there. Um, they're actually uh, uh, plastic wine bottles. So the idea is you decant wine into them, but actually they're really handy for water as well because they pack away practically nothing when empty. Uh, and you could either put water or wine in them. They work fine for both. Uh, and then over here, I have my swimming gear. Um, with on the right hand side a toweling robe. Um, the toweling robe is a little bit heavier than I also have a plain towel but uh, again you can actually wear the toweling robe as additional clothes at, at in the evening if it's really cold so it's kind of like an insurance policy. Uh, and then if we go down to the next row that bright orange square thing is a, a, a sitting mat so it's just a bit of uh, fold out polystyrene you can sit on very lightweight just above it is a bivy bag, um, so that's a survival bag. If that's in case I do any hiking, uh, I'll carry that with me just in case I fall over and break a leg or something, uh, so it'll keep me warm. Uh, next to that we have a collapsible cup and bowl, so they pack down completely flat. Uh, then we have some titanium cutlery, which weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, then we come on to the cooking gear, uh, so we have some oil. Uh, and we have methylated spirits there, that's that purple stuff. And then in the middle, there's an alcohol stove and a frying pan. Uh, and I, I might show that set up um, in more detail as I'm on the road. Uh, if you look at the Instagram account, you'll see me frying eggs and cooking coffee with it. Uh, going along, we have a thermos flask. This is a new experiment. Uh, it's a food thermos flask, it'll keep uh, food or water very hot for about nine hours. Um, so if I'm somewhere where I've ha access to boiling water, like if I if I stay somewhere overnight, for instance, uh, then I can put boiling water in it and and then have that that evening to make tea uh, with. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to prove to be worth the weight in bulk, but we'll see. Uh, and then I've just thrown some typical lightweight food items in. So those are all. Uh, very light but with a lot of energy in them. So some Bombay mix, some instant noodles and some uh, Chef Tesco chocolate and granola bars. Uh, that next item over the headnet is the all-important midge defence system. Um, uh, <laughs> Ireland and Scotland even more so have a lot of midges uh, so I found a good way of dealing with that is actually to wear a net over your head. Um, I've got a cap there Okay, so they, uh, these two items are the waterproof jacket and a set of waterproof trousers. The trousers I'm kind of debating, I mean, there is an argument that instead of having waterproof trousers, just wear shorts or something light while it's raining heavily and ch change when it stops. Um, however, I think with Scotland, also the west of Ireland, you will get multi-day heavy rain. Uh, so in that situation, I, I, I think actually having stuff that's pretty seriously waterproof is quite valuable. Uh, and then we have the tent. So that's an MSR Hubba Hubba one person tent. It weighs 1.3 kilograms. Uh, that's one of the really pricey uh, items of my kit. Uh, 
So next coming over down here, this is my sleeping wear. So what that is, it's merino wool thermal underwear. So uh, full sleeves and full trousers on that. Uh, merino wool snood, uh, that's to keep my head warm at night. Um, there are also uh, a pair of very fine black gloves there. That's partially about midges, or mostly about midges in fact. Uh, if they're really bad, then that'll keep them off my hands. Uh, and there's a blindfold too. And then there's a second smaller snood, uh, which is in fact what I use for a pillow, because what I do with this is I stuff uh, some of the clothes into it. And then that gives me a kind of instant pillow that weighs nothing. Uh, now we have the sleeping mat. Uh, that's a therm thermo rest. Uh, again, that's quite an expensive purchase, uh, but it's about half the size of the next one's up in price. Uh, beside that, we have my sleeping bag. That's a very lightweight sleeping bag. I originally uh, bought it actually for sleeping on couches. Uh, however, um, the sleeping bags that are actually, you know, multi-season ones are very, very bulky. You're talking about three times the size of that typically and twice the weight. So instead, what I do is I pair that lightweight sleeping bag with this next item, uh, which is a sheet bag. Uh, so the sheet bag is, it's very light, it's my hand to scale, um, and it has two advantages. One, it makes things a little bit warmer, uh, but the second advantage is if you're spending a long time on the road, um, your sleeping bag is going to get pretty manky uh, if you're sleeping in it night after night. And you can't really wash them uh, without uh, messing up the... the uh, the down or whatever the equivalent insulation layer is. Uh, so if instead you sleep in the uh, sheet bag inside the sleeping bag, you can wash the sheet bag regularly. So that just keeps things a lot more clean and pleasant. Speaking of which, <laughs> we get to the toilet items. Uh, so toilet paper uh, and the spade. So the spades for if I'm somewhere where I can get somewhere that's say about 30 meters from, uh, from paths and from rivers and other lake source water sources or whatever else so somewhere that's a good distance from that uh, dig a hole that's you know uh, uh, 10 to 15 centimeters deep and that's one option uh, the second option you can just see the plastic bags in there which are actually doggy poo bags uh, and they'll work the big ones actually work very well for humans as well so uh, that's the transporting it out of me uh, out with me option if there's nowhere suitable in terms of holes and sometimes there won't be uh, particularly with beach camping um next bag over is my sundry toiletries bag uh, toothbrush all the obvious sort of stuff in there there's also a clothesline which i made with a bit of shock cord for drying stuff um there is um sun cream all those sort of essential items and then we come down to this row here so this is kind of my on-the-go bike repair stuff, which is mostly about punctures. I don't really think I'm going to be able to fix much more than a puncture. Uh, so the uh, puncture repair kit, a spare tube, a pump, um, and then some cable ties there as well, because it's amazing how much uh, you can fix with cable ties on a temporary basis. Uh, <laughs> now we have the recording equipment. So that's a selfie stick, the white thing, uh, my GoPro camera, uh, a spare uh, memory card for the camera. Uh, the red thing is a, a set of Beats headphones. Well, it used to be a set. I only, I've lost one of them. Uh, and I, I only have one, but what I use that for is it sits in my ear when I'm uh, going anywhere that I need a lot of directions and i will be playing uh, the directions into my head. So the turn left, turn right, all those sort of things coming up. Uh, the GoPro, uh, which obviously you'll have seen footage from that, and then a head torch up the top, both for setting up the tent, uh, and also if I end up on the roads at night, which I sooner make that a minimum of, but that will happen sometimes. That white uh, rectangular thing there is a tiny uh, light that will last about 40 minutes, a uh, little power pack. Uh, so again, for putting up the tent. Uh, so here we have my two power packs that I use for charging the phone and for charging the GoPro and recharging the torch, any of those sort of things. Um, the bigger one on the right there will actually recharge an iPhone Max about three times fully. So, you know, that'll keep me on the road basically without a charging opportunity for three days. Uh, only problem with it is it takes about 10 hours to fully charge itself. And then the smaller one, 
uh, is probably about one and a half phone charges uh, and that's really for charging the GoPro uh, as much as anything else. Uh, GoPro uses a USB-C socket, it's got a USB-C socket. Um, beside that, the, that orange and blue cable, that's a, um, a camping or caravanning charging point. Uh, if you get an electric hookup, they, you need one of those two in order to be able to connect into it. So that's the smallest and lightest one I can find. That's new this year. I don't know if I'll be actually using it much because um, uh, I think a lot of places will turn out to have somewhere else that I, I can charge devices. Uh, and then the cable there with the blue end on it, uh, that's that's the emergency emergency cable and that connects the bike's electric system to my phone. Uh, so if or if the other two have run flat and I've nothing else left to left at all, I can recharge the phone for navigation off the power that's in the bike batteries. Now obviously that's something I prefer not to do because I want to keep the bike batteries to keep me going forward. And that gets us on to the last items. Uh, which are the bike batteries. So I have two batteries. I bought an extra one. They're both 500 megawatt. Uh, they, depending on cycling conditions, they're going to give me, in, in, like in difficult, very hilly terrain, uh, I'd probably get about 180 kilometers out of them. Uh, in, in relatively flat terrain without that much wind, I could get as high as 250 kilometers out of the pair. So that's a lot of range built into that. Uh, essentially, it means I, you know, I only need a big recharging session every second or third day. Uh, and then beside that again is uh, a fast recharger. So the standard Bosch recharger with the 500 megawatt battery would take about four hours to fully recharge it. That fast one will charge it in about two and a half hours. Uh, so that's quite useful for charging in pubs, etc. So anyway, that's the um, that's all the gear I have. So as you can imagine, getting all of that into those bags is a bit of a challenge, but actually it works uh, and it's good enough. Uh, so one additional thing I would say, uh, learned through bitter experience, uh, is that panniers are good, but if you get really torrential rain, they might well leak. And last year, the last leg of my Irish trip, the second night out, I got absolutely soaked uh, near Donegal town uh, and it flooded the pannier that I had my electronics in uh, and actually blew up one of the power packs. And this is one that I was luckily able to pick up uh, in, in a, the next town up that actually had a uh, had a kind of uh, electronic shop so I was able to replace it so it wasn't the end of the world but it certainly would have been a problem otherwise uh, so what I am now doing is I've bought a load of waterproof stuff stack stuff sacks and the sens sensitive electronics go into those and are then sealed uh, in the panniers. So if they do leak, that's much less likely uh, to get wrecked. Uh, and I do the same, I've, I've, I've about five of these. Uh, I do the same thing for my sleeping gear. Because uh, again, you definitely don't want to uh, arrive somewhere and discover all your uh, all the stuff you're gonna sleep in is wet, particularly if your clothes have got soaked in the downpour as well. So uh, that one recommendation from experience would be anything that's sensitive to water, uh, put it in a stuff sack, seal it up, goes in the panniers. And what you'll probably also find uh, is that you want to put that not right at the bottom of the pannier because what can happen if a pannier floods is if you get a couple of inches of water down the bottom of it, uh, put it you know, in, in, in the mid layer uh, just in case that happens.